and welcome to this episode of Cool Harford Schools. I'm Jillian Later, Manager of Communications for Harford County Public Schools. Responding to the needs of our very diverse student body is quite an undertaking, but we love supporting our students with programs and activities that educate, nurture, and support the goals and dreams of our students. One of the places within our school walls that reflects this best is our libraries, where students find the mirrors, windows, and doors to the wonderful worlds that await them. Libraries are the heart of our schools. This is where kids come to fall in love with reading. This is where our kids come to learn new ideas and get to explore new ideas. And this is a place where they get to ask questions and find answers. My name is Julia Eloff. I am the librarian here at Bakerfield Elementary School, and I have been here for 13 years. And I am here today to show you our library, what libraries look like in Harford County Public Schools, and all the amazing things that we get to do here with our students. When I walk into a library, I feel like it's kind of like the whole world between different pages. When I walk into a library, I feel amazed because there's so many different options, like from fairy tales all the way from learning to tiger. It's, it's the widest variety that, I, that I've ever seen. So one of the things that we often talk about as librarians is this idea of windows, mirrors, and doors in a library. So the idea behind that phrase is that books can operate in many different ways for many different kids. Some of my books are window books. So sometimes a kid reads a book and the character in the book has different experiences. Maybe they have a disability that the student doesn't have or maybe they have a life experience that's different. And reading that book can actually teach that kid and help them build empathy for students that are in that situation. So we call that a window book because it allows you to look into someone else's brain, into someone else's life to see what they're experiencing and then you get to internalize that and say okay how can I have empathy how can I support people or or learn about people in this situation my window book is dive won't be kid because I can see Greg's struggles and how he just wants to be a cool kid in his school but he always fails to the seed of being the kid that he really wants to be we also have books that we call mirror books. A mirror book is when you look into a book and you see yourself, you get chills, you read it and you think, oh, this is me, this is my character, I relate to this, I'm going through this. And these books help you feel seen, they help you feel validated. And for a lot of my kids, it can help them work through what they're going through. You know, if they're in a family that's divorced and they're reading a book that has a character whose parents are divorced, it can actually give them strategies to help them navigate that. I see a mirror in a mango-shaped space because she struggles with a lot of stuff in her life and she doesn't want a lot of people to know and she's afraid that if she does tell them they will make fun of her and call her names and I can relate to her about that because if you go through a hard time and you might not want a lot of people to know about it and when you tell them about it they might get really mad at you. Then we have books that we call doors, and these are the books that change you. These are the books that introduce new ideas, and when you're done reading them, you walk away and you're like, I am not the same person. I have a new image or a new vision of what I want for my life, and these are the books that empower you to move forward. My doorway book is The First Cat in Space Ate Pizza because it teaches me to persevere. This really relates to me because I used to um, give up when something went wrong, but after reading this book, it really motivates me to just keep going. I know for me, there are two kind of book characters or characters that really inspired me to be a librarian. Um, one is Belle from Beauty and the Beast, because obviously she had an amazing library. Um, but I loved that there was a, a princess, a strong woman that loved books, loved reading, and that that was such a huge part of her character. And I really connected to that. The other book that I loved reading growing up was Anne of Green Gables. Um, I loved her because the character is a hot mess and I tend to be a little bit of a hot mess and so that was a mirror book for me where I related to her and her struggles and her creativity and her desire to fit in in the world and find her place in the world. A lot of times when people think about a library, they think about books. I know for me growing up in the 80s, libraries were pretty much all books, but now we get to encompass so many more things. Um, in our library, we get to teach uh, research, I teach 
um, coding. I get to teach STEM and electronics. We do a Minecraft coding club. I teach 3D pens. I get to teach digital citizenship. I talk to the kids about internet safety and password security and how to avoid phishing scams. I talk with my students about how to tell if something is real, how to check authorship. So if they're looking online, how they can read a site and then research the author and then validate their credentials and dig deeper and dig further. We explore new ideas. We talk about what is a question, what's a good question, how do you ask a meaty research question and then how do you dig and find the answers for what you're looking for. I believe that books are so important for our kids because they give them a chance to safely explore the world and explore new ideas. One of the conversations I have with my kids in library is that this is a big moment for them. Coming into a library as a kid empowers them to choose something. And we have conversations about family values and what the kids are reading. And I tell my students, take your books home, read them with your parents, talk to your family about what you're reading. If you read something and you're not sure or what you think about it, that's a great opportunity to have a conversation. I feel like the importance of a book is that you can learn a lot from it and it can teach you a lot about how other people see the world and how they struggle with a lot of things. I think I've read about 50 books so far. So next time you're at a library, think about the voices of the books that you've read. And I would challenge you to try a new voice. Take the book as an opportunity to open a window. Find someone new. Close your eyes, grab a new author, ask the librarian. We love to talk to people and help people. And see if you can find a different voice, a different experience, and see where it takes you. Anchoring each and every classroom in our schools is a teacher, a professional who is trained and committed to providing our students with the best education possible. Along with our commitment to our students, Harford County Public Schools is also committed to growing the best educators. And we're doing that by guiding and nurturing future teachers through our Teacher Academy of Maryland program. In Harford County Public Schools, we are dedicated to growing our own teachers. My name is Elisa Thomas, and I'm the program coordinator, teacher specialist for the Teacher Academy of Maryland for Harford County Public Schools. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we in the Teacher Academy of Maryland are helping Harford County Public Schools to grow our own teachers. In conjunction with the Maryland State Department of Education, the Teacher Academy of Maryland is across the state of Maryland in many high schools. The Teacher Academy is designed to further education for students who think they want to work in education or become a teacher in their future careers. Hi, I'm Destiny. I'm in the TAM program and I want to be an art teacher when I graduate. So I wanted to be a teacher because one, my mom was a teacher and two, a lot of teachers had like major roles in my life and really impacted me and I want to be able to do that for another student. In the TAM program, our students are 9th through 12th grade students. In addition to completing all of their coursework for a Maryland State Diploma and a Harford County Public School Diploma, our Teacher Academy of Maryland students take a course in each grade. The courses are designed around students being able to learn how people think, learn how the brain works, learn how to talk to people, and learn how to teach people how to do things. TAM as a program, it educates you a lot on children and their developmental process and philosophies. There's a lot of psychology in TAM and it really helps you understand the mind of a child and how to educate them and get them to understand what you're trying to teach them. Our course structure starts with human growth and development and then students learn about teaching as a profession. From there students go and learn about foundations of curriculum and instruction where they're learning to plan lessons, they're learning strategies for planning lessons, and they're learning how, how to ask questions to students. I love how Tam, the classes are smaller, so you really get to build community with people who also have an interest in teaching and education. The final course in the Teacher Academy of Maryland happens during the student's senior year. Our students are interns in a Harford County Public School with a master teacher. They start in October, and they go two days a week to the school. They work with the teacher and the teacher's students from October until April of their senior year. So the internship has helped me understand a lot about what actually happens in the classroom and how to really communicate with the students. This internship really helps you get a head start 
in teaching in a classroom and being in a classroom. So when you're in college, you're ahead of other students who are just now going into the classroom and learning about the environment. What we're hearing from our students who are in college now is that once they get to college, they are way ahead of their peers because they've been in the school working with a master teacher and students for the last year. Our students know how to lesson plan. They know how to do small group work. They know how to do one-on-one -on -one work and read alouds. They know how to reflect on their practice and they are very receptive to feedback because they're used to getting that. What surprises me the most about teaching is how students really respond and understand to the things you say. So as a teacher, you have to really watch what you say and think about what you say and how other students interpret that. The Teacher Academy of Maryland is a Harvard County Public School magnet program. Students in the eighth grade have the opportunity to apply to a magnet program in the fall of their eighth grade year. Information about all magnet programs are given in community meetings, open houses, and information from school counseling offices. Once students go in through their student planner, they will find the application for the Teacher Academy of Maryland. Once they submit that application, I go through all of them, and then I offer admissions to our program. I wanted to join TAM because in middle school, I was in Ed Rising and we learned a lot about education and they told us that this program would further our knowledge in education and how to teach others. The students who go through our program tell me often how inspired, excited, and glad they are to be able to learn how to teach people how to do things and how to be nurturing to those people around them. Advice I would give for people who are interested in the TAM program is think about your why. Why do you want to be a teacher? Why are you interested in learning how to be a teacher? As a student, what I would love for you to do is take a look around your school. Take a look in your classroom. Do you have a Teacher Academy intern in your classroom working with you one-on-one? -on -one? Or in the classroom next door? Or do you see them in the hallways? And then ask yourself the question, do I want to do that one day? Because I bet the answer might be yes. Please welcome tonight's presentation. When I grow up. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to borrow a lot for an education. And then not know what to do with it. When I grow up, I don't want to be paid less. I want to know how to provide for my family. And invest in my community. When I grow up, I just want things to be different. At Junior Achievement, <laughs> We promote economic empowerment through education, but we can't do it alone. A good education extends far beyond the three R's and involves teaching our students to be good citizens, responsive to the needs of those around them. For students at Youth's Benefit Elementary School, community service is key to empowering the individual while strengthening the community. So an important part of a well-rounded education is incorporating community service and helping those around us. I'm Connie Sharatonic from Youth Benefit Elementary School and I'm here to share a little bit about the community service projects that we do that help our students better understand how to serve others. So community service is a way to strengthen the area around us. Instead of saying, well, I have a lot and you don't have enough, it's recognizing that we need to work together as a family. I think like for things that we do here strengthens the community. Like people like people could if they like see this or like they see like you spend at elementary school like giving resources to kids in need, they might think that like that's the right thing to do and they might want to contribute and give like things to people in need and donate like clothes and stuff. After all, a community isn't just one person. It's a lot of people working together to make um, this environment a better place. So the families and students at Youth Benefit each month focus on a different area that we feel is a need. Well, we do like empty stocking funds where we have like toys and puzzles and games um, like that. and. They go to kids who need them and don't have toys for Christmas. And we also do, in October, we do a um, Harvest for the Hungry where we bring in canned foods or foods in boxes for kids and families who need food. 
The community service projects that we do at Youth Benefit are like um, the KC Cares is where we, br we bring pajamas to school for like and put it in buckets for the kids that need them and like for the kids who don't have the resources or money to buy them and it's kind of like for the Harvest for Hungry where we give kids like um we bring like canned foods to put in buckets for kids who don't who don't have like the money to buy food and for the people who need food and stuff. In November, we move into the Empty Stocking Fund, which is hosted right here in Bel Air. And we try to stuff a van filled with toys and crafts and things that are for children aged infant to 13. Community service is really important in a community because like most of us have what we need, but there are some of us who don't, and we always try and help those who don't have everything they need. In January, we donate to Fairy Tales Rescue, which is a pet rescue that uh, is run by one of our own kindergarten teachers. And we focus on cats, dogs, birds, rabbits, and try to provide for them so that they can find a good home. In February, we are writing letters to local nursing homes and cards so that they can feel that they are being remembered and cared for. When you're writing a letter to somebody at a nursing home, you cannot tell me they're not going to light up when they see a little scribbled picture and drawing from a kindergartner or first grader. That's making an impact. That's causing positive and happiness feelings to spread and that's really the, the wonderful thing as a teacher to watch and see that, that this is hopefully going to be a lifelong journey for them as they get older. I hope that like people see what we're doing here at Youth Benefit Elementary School and it inspires them to donate and like contribute in the things in things where we need to like do to like help people and stuff like that. In March we take Casey Cares which is sponsored by Chick-fil-A for children who are suffering from illnesses such as cancer and we donate brand new pajamas. And then as a celebration at the end, we have a giant pajama day. Me being involved in community service makes me feel like good about myself because I, I'm contributing, I'm contributing to like people that need it and like that need help and like that needs resources, food and clothes and stuff, like hat and mittens when it's cold and stuff. Education, yes, a lot of people believe it is just reading, writing, math, the typical old school. However, in our world today, we, we need problem solvers. And we need people that can help go to areas in need. And so when you're looking at community service, you're helping students to, to have more of that humanitarian side. And, and the hope would be that you would want to help and not only think of yourself, but to be able to want to have a community that is happy and able to self-sustain because they know they can rely on each other based on what they can provide. I learned that giving for giving people like food and clothes for the people that need it is the, like the best thing to do instead of just sitting around. It made me feel really good when I figured out that I really was helping other people who don't have everything they need because I have personally everything that I need but there are some kids who don't so I it made me feel very good to know that I was helping other kids in need. I've learned that like giving to people in need is like the right thing to do. The safety of our students while they're in our care is something we take very seriously. It takes a team of dedicated professionals to ensure that safety from our students and teachers to school safety liaisons and school resource officers. Take a look. A lot of times when I was in patrol and I got to see um, kids either excited to see us or on the flip side, some kids maybe not in some great um, home situations. And I always had a desire to try to help them, you know, to get out of that and to make themselves uh, a, better, a better life for themselves. So to now be able to have more interaction with them on this side of things, um, it's very different and I enjoy that. 
Hi, my name is Corporal Amanda Ross. I work for the Hartford County Sheriff's Office in our school policing unit. Um, currently, I'm the Central Area School Supervisor. So I act as a supervisor to all of our school resource officers at our Central Area Middle, High School, and Elementary Schools. I grew up, my father was a Maryland State Trooper. Um, I grew up always having an interest in what he did. Um, I loved Take Your Daughter to Work Day and seeing all the stuff my dad got to do at work. Um, and then I went to college at the University of Maryland in College Park and I studied criminology and criminal justice and really fell in love with policing and learning about you know, the theoretical side of it and decided that I just wanted to put the practical side um, into effect and I came to work at the Sheriff's Office, which Harford County is where I grew up, born and raised, so I wanted to serve the community I grew up in. Um, I think it's really cool to see it all come full circle. You know, I remember having interactions with my SROs back when I was in high school, and so now to be on the other side of it and to see the positive impact that we can put um, into our community for the children as well as the staff, it's really cool to be on this side of things. My job as a supervisor is to essentially manage all of my SROs. So what that means is if they have um, a hot call or something like that at the school, it's my job to go there and assist them with that call. Um, it's also my job to help build the relationships between them, the school policing unit, and their administrations as well. Um, so that way the sheriff's office and the administrations have a good working relationship. Building good relationships between the school and the sheriff's office is the most important thing about our job in the school policing unit. Um, we work in the community services division, so building those relationships with our community members is extremely important so they feel comfortable coming to us um, about the good things as well as the bad things and are able to um, reach out to their school resource officers for anything that they need. You can go into any of these schools and I see my guys and girls and they're just high-fiving the kids and fist bumping them. The kids are excited to see them and it's just another figure in their life that they can come to you know to tell the good things as well as the bad things too and just somebody that they can really lean on almost as a friend you know and a mentor and these guys and girls take it very seriously and they do a wonderful job. So I really think just coming in with a positive attitude and really being eager to help in any way helps make the schools a better place. So my name is Tina Graff and I'm the school safety liaison at Falston High School. I've been here for ooh, 16 years now. Um, I didn't start out in this job. I actually started as a, a substitute and then a position to open up in the main office and as a school secretary. So 15 years later, um, I was still there. <laughs> Last year, this position opened up and it was perfect for me. I loved uh, being in the main office. I loved our students. Um, I'm part of the community. I know a lot of the parents and the families here. So it was a natural transition for me to just move from that office position into the school safety liaison position. I love the fact that I could just get up and get up out of my chair and walk around and, and really try to impact the students more than what I was currently doing. I think the biggest change is it was a sedentary position while I was in the front office. I feel like now I move around all day long so I can really go out and talk to our students, find out what's going on, um, find out the pulse of our school. I probably um, do 20,000 steps every day. Um, I had to get new shoes. I have my running shoes now and um, I, uh, and I like that. I enjoy that. But I just try to be a presence. When I, when I initially took the job and I asked my principal, like, what can I do to support you? And he said, be a presence. Just get out as much as you can. So I think building relationships um, is probably one of the biggest parts of this job. Uh, I try to I try to work uh, or attend as many sporting events as I can, um, the plays, uh, find out what the kids' interests are. So it's just nice because when a kid sees me, you know, at their game and then they see me the next day at school, you know, it's often like, oh, you know, hey, you did great at your game last night. Um, and they appreciate that. Like they really appreciate the fact that you took, took an interest in watching them. I think sometimes they just really need an adult that they can trust and, and talk to. and. I hope that they found that in me, and I feel like they have. It works well. This was the best idea to add SSLs to schools. I feel like it's just been a, a, a perfect program that um, I think all the schools are really enjoying having an SSL. So I hope so. You don't have to jump out of a plane to see all the amazing things Hartford County, Maryland has to offer. It's just way cooler if you do. Take your pick. 
Harper County, Maryland has something exciting for everyone. A great leader leads by example, and we want to take a minute to sing the praises of Dr. Bolson. We've always known he was the best, but now it's official as he was named Superintendent of the Year for Maryland. So it's my honor to, uh, to introduce this year's Superintendent of the Year. It's no secret, it's Dr. Sean Bolson. Um, yeah. We have an incredible team. I'm so fortunate in Hartford, um, but uh, we're all fortunate in the state of Maryland. I'm honored, humbled. Any one of my colleagues could be standing up here instead of me tonight because they're amazing people. Thank you all for this. I'd like to present to you the Maryland Superintendent of the Year 2000. You know, the state, everyone in the state will now see what we already knew that we had in this great leader. Yes. Thank you for everything that you've done for all of us. I love you, brother. Oh. This is our award. Um, I do what I can every day, but you guys do all the hard stuff, I think. And um, this is a fantastic place to work. And without missing a beat or a bow tie, he was back to work. I hope you've learned a little bit more about what goes into providing a top-notch education in Harford County. Let us know what you're curious about and what you'd like us to explore on cool Harford schools. Stay up to date on Harford County Public Schools happenings between shows by following us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next time, I'm Jillian Later.